when God begins to lead you. Even to you, it might look silly. Nah, this makes no logical sense. What do you mean I should go here? I should leave my job. What do you really mean, God? Well, that's the thing about God. He knows the end from the beginning. If you know God's grand plan for your life, you would shut your mouth up from complaining and go to God and say, okay, God, what do I do? And when the enemy comes to you, he comes to you with his scare. The enemy knows how dangerous the one who knows God's word and God's promise is. The enemy knows, the devil knows. But that's why they will come to you with a scare because once they can scare you, eh? Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Omi Ozike Nwachiko and welcome to the second episode of our brand new series, How to be led by God. God's leading is so important that when God, God himself told Moses, now you can go. Moses said to God, no, if your presence will not go with us, we are not going anywhere. And God says, don't worry, the angel will lead you. It, it is so important because your victory, your success is dependent on who is leading you. Who told you to go? Who episode two, we're focusing on the wrong way out. In episode one, I, I talked about your heart posture, right? How to just tell God I'm ready to face anything that will come my way because I know that you're going to take care of me. Yeah. But when you now begin to feel the heat on the journey, what do you do? One vital key that God needs from anyone that he's going to lead on this path to freedom to success is obedience obedience is so vital yeah we have to spend time to pray to god to give us an obedient heart Sometimes God tells you to do something that even logically it doesn't make any sense. And you begin to look at God like for real, God needs you to be obedient. Why? Because God knows the end from the beginning. If he knows this is the end and he knows that, okay, this is what you need to do to get to that end. But you don't know the end. You don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. You have no idea. You don't know what's going to happen in two years time, in a year's time. So how then do you question the voice of God upon your life? Like it doesn't make any sense. God needs you to have the spirit of obedience and you can pray for it you say holy spirit please give me a heart to be obedient to the lord god almighty holy spirit give me the grace to be obedient to god it is so vital to learn about how god leads you yeah we are also going to be looking at the children of israel how god led them through the you know wilderness to get to their promised land now let's go to the book of exodus chapter 14 from verse 1 the bible says now the lord spoke to moses saying tell the sons of israel to turn back and camp in in front of okay y'all pronounce this word pi ha heroth okay between migdol and the sea you shall camp in front of Balzifon, opposite it by the sea. Now listen to verse 3. Verse 3 says, For Pharaoh will say of the Israelites, They are wandering aimlessly in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. Do you hear that? God himself is giving the Israelites an instruction. This is the part I want you to take. Stay here. When Pharaoh hears where they are, Pharaoh will say, They are wandering aimlessly. But they are not wandering. They are following the leading of the Lord. But anybody who sees them, we say they are wandering aimlessly you know that's the same thing that happened when god begins to lead you even to you it might look silly nah this makes no logical sense what do you mean i should go here what do you mean i should leave my job and start doing the what, what do you really mean god well that's the thing about god he knows the end from the beginning would you rather go fast 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 and get to your destruction or would you rather follow god and get to your desired destination ask yourself this question it's so important ask yourself this question Look at it. God knows. He says, don't worry. Pharaoh is going to look and say, nah, man, these people are lost. And you know, when you're following the leading of the Lord, his voice, right? Don't make the mistake of comparing yourself to like your mate. Because the moment you begin to compare yourself, then you begin to now say, nah, man, God, I have to question. Nah, you cannot. I know you're God, but like this one makes no sense. But it makes sense. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. And let me tell you how and why he knows what he's doing in verse 4. Listen. So verse 4 says, I will harden a make stop stubborn and defiant Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them and I will be glorified and honored through Pharaoh and all his army and the Egyptians shall know without any doubt and acknowledge that I am the Lord and they did so obedience they did so before we get to the obedience let's break this verse down here yeah? God is saying come here when you come here there will be a mindset that your enemies might have right I 
want them to have that mindset. Let them think you're wasting your time. Let them think you're foolish. Let them think things are not working out for you. Let them think your children are not. Let them think what they want to think. All you should be concerned about is obeying the voice of the Lord because what? He wants to use your life to glorify himself. He says what? And I will glorify and honor myself through Pharaoh and all his armies and the Egyptians shall know without any doubt and acknowledge that I am the Lord. That is what he wants to do with your life. So if you want to be led by God and get all that blessing that he's promised you, you have to be obedient, right? Now, another thing that we cannot look away from is look at this. Who is God telling this thing to? Moses, right? Or see, God has a plan for the Israelites. God has a plan for their lives. God has a plan to use them to give an information to his head, to their enemies. God wants to teach their enemies a lesson. God has a grand plan. Shouldn't he be telling the Israelites his plans? Why is he telling Moses his plans? Why? Because Moses is the one that goes nearer to God. And the Israelites are the ones who keep complaining and complaining and complaining. If you want to be led by God and you want God to tell you his secrets concerning your life, you have to be the one who gets close to God. Today's episode is what? The wrong way out. The wrong way out is by you complaining and complaining and complaining. When a message comes to you, an opportunity, position comes to you when you encounter any kind of mishap on a journey that God has sent you on what you're supposed to do is to go to God and say okay God spend time with God be close to him talk to him talk to him through it when you take the step go and meet God and say God I've taken the step you told me to do this I've done this thank you for even telling me because it is the one that is closest to him that he will reveal his secrets to remember Abraham what did the Bible record the Bible recorded that God was going to destroy two city so Sodom and Gomorrah right but who did he tell he tells Abraham he didn't even tell the people in the city in fact the plan he was he was about to embark on God here yeah, would affect two cities and even the children of God in that city but it was Abraham he told what did he say shall I hide my secret from my friend Abraham it is the one who is close to God that he's going to reveal it to he cannot reveal it to you when you're spending so much time just complaining why why, oh, why, oh, why? You're going to be stuck there. There's a grand plan. God has a grand plan with your life. If you are a child of God and you hear from God, you know, I, I know somebody who always tells me, you know, I know God loves me, but I keep asking myself, why did he bring these people my way? Why did he connect me to these people? Why? And I keep telling the person, you don't even understand. Even that in your life is for a reason. Look at this. I was going to read um, this verse in episode one, but let's check it now. James 1, 2, 4 says what? Consider it joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. It, it's a testing of your faith and it's going to produce perseverance. And also, if you know God's grand plan for your life, you would shut your mouth up from complaining and go to God at every point in time and say, okay, God, what do I do? Okay, God, this is what's happening. What do I do? Help me. I don't know what to do. You were the one that brought me here. Help. You would talk to him. You wouldn't spend time complaining. He won't talk to you. That's not the way to hear from God and not the way certainly to be led by God. Anyways, back to our story. So, fair and his people their hearts have been hardened and they're like no what did we do let's go back and recapture them you guys pharaoh went to recapture the israelites they don't have any arms right pharaoh goes with 600 fighting chariots i want to read it to you the bible says what and he took 600 chosen war chariots <laughs> and all the other chariots of Egypt with fighting charioteers over all of them. 600 fighting chariots with all the other fighting chariots in the land, war chariots, and then even the, all the charioteers to go and capture people who are harmless. That's another point to learn. Eh? When the enemy comes to you, he comes to you with a scare. His intention is to scare you. The enemy knows the word of the Lord. The enemy knows how dangerous, so the, the one who knows God's word and God's promise is the enemy knows the devil knows the demons they know but that's why they will come to you with a scare because they, if once they can scare you eh, once they can show you a dream and that dream will just scare you once you can wake up and be like oh my god I had a 
dream that's scary you are consumed in that fear you don't know that your right action is to pray and to decree and to scatter and to speak the word of the lord upon your life then they've got you look at it hi Akai. i can feel god's presence here thank you for your presence you know maybe i should even tell you this at that point in time when the enemy comes at you what you're supposed to do is to decree you're supposed to speak the word of the lord you're not supposed to bask in that fear he wants to control your mind he wants to get you to be scared the wrong way out is by just basking in that fear and being frightened no you speak what you want to see you will come against them you will cry out to god and say god you brought me this far you can't leave me here i know who you are the bible says what you will not leave me nor forsake me that's what you said in your Word. so my father i hold on to your word i decree that the egyptian i see today i will see them no more you begin to speak the word you begin to speak you begin to speak the bible says what the the water was stormy and the the disciples called jesus jesus rebukes the storm i rebuke this storm in the name of jesus i am a child of god the, the bible says decree it and it comes to pass i decree that this storm will not take me down in jesus name. and you begin to decree build up yourself in your most holy faith you will not cower look at verse 10 this is why god is talking to moses not the israelite see verse 10 verse 10 says what as pharaoh approached the israelite looked up and saw the egyptians marching after them and they were very frightened underline the word frightened they were very frightened so they so the israelite cried out to the lord that's supposed to be a good thing abby let's read verse 11 and hear what they said they said was then they said to moses is it because there are no graves in egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness what is this that you have done to us by bringing us to egypt did we not say to you in egypt leave us alone let us serve the imagine did we not say to you in egypt leave us alone let us serve the egyptians for it would have been better for us to serve the egyptians as slaves than to die in the wilderness you know at this point i want you to put yourself just imagine you're, you're sitting now beside god hmm? and now you're privy to the fact that god had this grand plan for them you know that god's plan is to show the egyptians a mega lesson that will make them never to cross the Israelites' path ever again. You know, you know that God's plan is even to use this scenario to show any other enemy that wants to rise up against Israelites to make them know that ah, the God of Israelites, they will finish. You better stay back. That's God's plan. Then you now begin to hear the people that God wants to fight for, that God has a grand plan for. You begin to hear them complain. Why did you bring us here? What is this? You better get to kill us, Abby. Why did you even save us in the first place? What is all this? After all we have been through, I thought, you know, it, it should have been easy. What kind of a God? You just begin to hear this thing. They said, we would have been there serving the Israelites. We're okay with that. Why did you come? They were the ones who cried out to God to come and save them before he sent Moses. Oh, you see, if you want to be led by God, I told you the first episode one, you have to watch. See this series, you can't miss any episode it is for your own good and it's so what your detriment if you made an episode obviously because you see your heart posture god is looking at your heart he wants to work with you but he look, these israelites are the same ones that god said if i take them through the shorter route they will they will go back to egypt so this is even the longer route to the first opposition they get they're already complaining now logically it might make sense to complain because i are you joking they are afraid. But that is it. Today, no now. If you want to be led by God, the enemy is going to come with scary things. Scary, scary positions. That's why you have to, it's important to equip yourself with like-minded Christians that you can be vulnerable to and they will pick you up. You have to have people that you can pick up your phone and call and say, oh, you know what, this is how I feel. I don't know what's happening. I need help. And they pray for you. You have to get to a point where even you, your, your, your spirit can't take this prayer anymore. You pick up your phone and call someone and say pray for me i'm weak and the person just said don't worry let's begin to pray the person has to pray the person is praying over the phone oh the person is picking in tongues oh, oh all of a sudden fire will enter inside your body all of a sudden your power will come back you never know when you start praying your own god is the presence of god is so mighty here i can feel it you know all of a sudden the power will enter inside you begin to you begin to pray you begin to say yes you will not come near me you will not overtake me i will stand i will not raise that is how to do it so ask yourself again what is your reaction when opposition comes to you what's your reaction because god is your father he sees your heart he knows 
You're breaking his heart. You're putting yourself even back. You're, you're limiting the move of God in your life. God wants to do great and mighty things for you. But like you're the person limiting God's hand in your life because you keep complaining. You keep making him regret even working with you in the first place. He's looking for the man who would trust him even in the face of opposition. Because in the next episode, I will tell you the right way out. Guess what? The Israelites saw um pharaoh abi and his 600 600 chariots and other war chariots and the charioteers you know you're you seeing them the dust is rising but then the horse is moving the israelites saw them and they were very frightened but guess who also saw them moses now what did moses do we'll find out in episode three you don't want to miss this one at all Subscribe to this channel, click the bell button beside that subscribe button. That's the one that will, that will notify you when a new video comes out because you have to learn. Let's pray. Ha, ah, I love you, God. I just want you to know that I love you so much. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for this new series. They, we just finished a very powerful series and you have come to give us another one. We give your glory. We bless your holy name. Yes, it's all part of the plan. I know. Thank you, God. I pray for this one who's watching right now, my father. And I, I just pray that your hand will just be upon their lives. I pray that this word would be spirit and life to them in the name of Jesus. I pray that this word will begin to stir up the fire in them. I pray that this word is a new fire upon their life to walk with you, oh my Father, in the name of Jesus. We just bless your holy name. I just want to say thank you for prayer answers in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, amen. God loves you so much. I love you, but God loves you way, way more. Tell me, Emily, if you have any question for me, Pennywise one at gmail.com. I really want to hear from you. I really want to know what you have to say. Yeah. Or just comment in the comment section how this blessed you. I want to hear from you. I love you with all my heart. You mean so much to me. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.